So I'm going to be completely honest with you all. Of the companies who I follow when it comes to their hardware releases, like Google or Apple or Microsoft, for some reason, I've just never really followed Samsung's releases because number one, they make a ton of phones and a ton of other technology. So I just never really felt the need to keep up on the latest Galaxy A10 plus 4G, whatever. But also the few things that I do want to keep up on, I just kind of see that they're out and go take a look at them. But recently I was talking with somebody I know who owns a Galaxy Fold 3 and they made me realize something about the Galaxy Fold 3 and it kind of changed my idea of the folding device and how they've been developed and how things are progressing. Then I see that the fourth generation of the Fold and the Flip both came out and that whole thought process went out the window. So let's talk about the new generation of the Galaxy Fold and the Galaxy Flip and my thoughts on it. Let's begin. Now, before I dive into what changed, I want to talk about the thought process I had about how these devices had been advancing, because from the first generation to the second generation to the third generation, I noticed a very similar pattern to what Apple did with the original iPhone. Here's what I mean. And yes, I know I'm making it an Apple equivalent, but bear with me because it'll make sense here in a minute. So as you probably know, back in 2007, Apple introduced the original iPhone and it was good. It was a massive step forward in the smartphone space and really pushed the design that we see on every smartphone today into the eye of the mainstream, but there were issues. It only had 2G connectivity, so it was super, super slow for anything other than phone calls, the occasional text message, and loading up basic websites for the time, which again, 2G back then was still slow. There were 3G phones at the time. This didn't have that. On top of that, the form factor for a lot of people wasn't something that they were comfortable with and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard, which makes it not a very good email machine. They liked a physical keyboard. I mean, hell, I've got a friend I know still to this day who does not want a device without a physical keyboard. This was just not a thing. This was not something people wanted. They didn't want a touch keyboard. It was just foreign to them. So it did sell to a lot of tech enthusiasts who had the money to buy this. This thing was $500 on a contract. $500 fully subsidized with a plan. Thank God contracts are no longer around, but it wasn't cheap. So once Apple saw that the original iPhone had a potential market, they introduced the iPhone 3G. And this was the first redesign of the device. It was essentially this device internally, but they added a 3G antenna and they gave it a, in my opinion, slightly better design with a more uniform plastic shell. So once the significantly more affordable iPhone 3G hit the market, people began to buy it and the market began to grow for Apple. So it was very clear at that point that this newfangled smartphone had a very good potential for the future. So Apple then made a faster version with the iPhone 3GS. And this was where Apple made their biggest change internally. Externally, it was exactly the same, but you could get a faster model now. And this was considered sort of the refinement at the start. But now you're probably asking yourself why I'm talking about iPhones in a Galaxy video. Well, because the original three iPhones followed a very similar path to what I saw the original three Galaxy Fold devices following. So that's why I figured this was a very apt comparison. I mean, think about it. We had the original Galaxy Fold and the original Galaxy Flip, both of which were very clearly devices that were beta testing devices. The folding phone thing was not a very popular idea for people who actually wanted to think logically about how a folding device would work. Why do I want a folding screen? The experience is worse in tablet mode than just owning a tablet, and the closed mode gives me this elongated weird screen. Also, the cost of the thing means that I could go and buy a regular phone and a regular tablet and have two dedicated experiences refined for each of the platforms. It didn't make any sense. so. It was generally sold to tech enthusiasts and people who wanted to be early adopters, but the general market didn't really want it. But because there was at least somewhat of a reasonable market, they introduced the 5G models of these devices. So especially on the Galaxy Flip, we had the Flip and the Flip 5G. Pretty close to the, oh, iPhone and iPhone 3G. Same phone on the inside, an improvement to the actual connectivity. Come on, you see the comparison? Then we get to the third generation, and this is where we actually get a design refresh unlike the iPhone, but we also then get internal performance improvements across the board, 
much better than what we were seeing with the original device. So better screen, generally more durable display. It looks completely different. You've got better cameras. You've got a hideaway camera on the fold. That's actually really cool. I do like that. But overall, these first three phones in the folding phone lineup made sense to me when I finally looked at how they were being developed alongside how Apple introduced what we now consider a modern smartphone. However, now that we're on to the fourth generation, this is where my ideas of what the fourth generation of these folding devices might be was completely shattered. And for you to fully understand why, I need to go back to my iPhone analogy because the fourth generation of the iPhone to come out was the legendary iPhone 4. This was a massive redesign. It was a beautiful device. It was insanely powerful, had a crazy good display for its time. And overall, I think is one of the best designed phones of all time. I will fight you in the comments. I'm just kidding. Feel free to disagree, leave your comments. I don't care. But for me, this is my first iPhone and the best iPhone ever made in my opinion, at least in terms of design. But this generation of iPhone is exactly the reason why my thought process on what Samsung was gonna do with the next generation of Galaxy Fold was completely shattered because this was where Apple took a fairly well-defined set of designs from the original iPhone to the plastic design to refining the plastic design with better internals to this. They took that original platform and completely redesigned it into something that we had never seen on the market before. And that's what I was hoping Samsung was gonna do with their new Galaxy devices. But instead, we got this. Yeah, so now I'm gonna dive into what changed with the new Galaxy devices because, well, if you're taking a look at it and you say, well, not a whole lot's changed, you're right. So with both devices, they are generally a bit thinner and a little bit lighter. They both improved on battery life. They both improved on the camera quality. And I believe from what they were saying with the Galaxy Fold, it has a slightly slimmer hinge, which, you know, fair enough. I guess the hinge being fat was a problem on the last generation. I don't know. But across the board, we just have some very minor improvements, which I don't think is what this generation of device needs. There were also some improvements to the software, at least in terms of the Galaxy Fold. When you go into an app now, you have a constant dock at the bottom, like a Windows PC or a Mac. So I guess for productivity, that's kind of cool. You also have some performance improvements, which for the Fold, I guess, makes sense if you're one of the people who's using three windows at a time on your screen. But hopefully, at least in terms of the software, I still say that the open fold device doesn't make sense to me. I think the flip would be something I'd be more inclined to buy, just a smaller device in the pocket. But if they continue to improve on the software to a point where I could justify it being sort of an iPad mini mini, then I think I could make sense of it. Something that got me excited until I began to read into it was the fact that Samsung put a durability section for both of the phones. So I figured, Great, they're improving the durability of the folding screen. That's the biggest point of failure. One of my coworkers has a Galaxy Fold and the screen protector is already beginning to come up. And I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, including Austin Evans' own video when he was talking about this new release, where the screen protector on these devices is beginning to peel off prematurely in a lot of cases or just from long-term use. So I was really hoping for overall improvements in durability to the internal display, the important one, the folding one, on both devices, whether it be the flip or the fold. Instead, what we got were improvements on the outside of the device. So we have Gorilla Glass Victus Plus for the external glass, the normal smartphone glass, and I guess in the case of the flip, the glass for that little tiny display on the front, which fortunately that display is bigger than the original, so it is actually useful, but overall we just have improvements to the outside for the glass, and from what I understand from the aluminum as well. So. Stronger aluminum, better glass on the outside. I didn't see anything even remotely hinting to the fact that there were any improvements to the screen on the inside. Look, I could go on and on about the original Galaxy Fold and Flip and the new Galaxy Fold and Flip and how, yeah, it's got better battery life and sure there's improvements to the performance and yeah, overall it's thinner, but here's the thing. With Samsung pushing folding phones, as hard as they are. And don't get me wrong, I think that what Samsung has done in the realm of folding devices, pushing them into the mainstream the way they have, that is something that is extremely impressive. But if Samsung is going to continue to make that push, 
they need to make the devices exciting each time they make them until they are actually going to be a mainstream option. For right now, the closest they've gotten to mainstream is with the flip being just under $1,000, a dollar under $1,000, or I believe actually a penny under $1,000. Either way, that's the closest they've gotten to mainstream is with the Galaxy Flip because that is actually reasonably affordable which I can't believe I'm saying, but if you put it on like a pay by month plan with your carrier, it is actually something you could attain. $1,500 on the other hand for the Fold, you better be getting some damn impressive specs in incredibly wild design. And the biggest thing for me is that I would hope that you're striving for a device that in many ways, including the internal display, is going to last you more than a year, especially especially at the Galaxy Fold price, not even mentioning the Galaxy Flip price. Like I said, I was actually kind of excited for this next generation of foldable devices from Samsung because it seemed like in one way or another, they were kind of following the iPhone path, which was first generation device, pretty rudimentary. Not a lot of people got into it. It was very clearly a finished, unfinished product that they wanted to see if people would buy, followed by a refinement to that, with a better connectivity suite and generally just an overall slightly more refined package, followed by a more refined package with better performance. Then with this fourth generation, now that they've had three gens to iron out a lot of the things and figure out what people wanted out of them, they would go nuts and just give us like a crazy design. But instead, we've just got another refinement. I'm just gonna say, in my opinion, I think it's a little too soon for Samsung to begin doing refinements on the design of the folding phones. I think it's good for them to do refinements on the actual technology, the folding glass. That is something that overall needs to be dramatically improved because again, at these prices, I would want it to last more than a year without needing to get the display or the screen protector replaced or the hinge cleaned or replacing my phone. Those things are where I can justify refinements, but when it comes to the design, if Samsung's gonna market the ever-loving out of these phones, they need to make them exciting still. And never thought I'd say that a folding screen would be not exciting, but here we are, Gen 4, and we've had, well, a refinement. At the end of the day, I think that Samsung is actually doing a really good job at pushing the idea of these folding devices out into the mainstream, getting them in the hands and in the minds of more consumers. But at this point in the game, it's a little too early to almost kind of rest on your laurels because you need to have something that brings customers back or convinces somebody who doesn't have one to get one. I mean, hell, Motorola with the Razer really leaned into nostalgia to sell their Razer flip phone, which was their own folding device. So I think that if Samsung can maybe crank it up a little, just go a little crazy. Do what you've always done with other devices in the past. Just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. That's what a lot of people loved about phones like the Galaxy Mega or the original Note or even the Note in general. People love it when Samsung just wings things at the wall that don't always make sense just to figure out what sticks. And I think that if they're going to succeed with the folding devices, they need to have that mindset again. Either way, those are my thoughts on the Galaxy Fold and Flip 4. I know I kind of blurred them together when I was talking about them, but like I said, if you're familiar with something like the Fold 3 or the Flip 3, these are basically that, but faster with better battery life and they're a little bit thinner. And you're also still probably gonna have to have your screen protector or screen replaced in about a year. So at the end of the day, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm actually genuinely curious because anytime I've talked to people I know about foldables, it's always very divisive. So I wanna know what you guys think. Also make sure to subscribe. I've got a ton of stuff coming out. I've got a bunch of videos for things that people have sent me. I'm super excited to do that. I had to take a break from doing those so I could make this video. And I'm also selling merch. I don't plug that enough, but I do. You can check that out in the link in the description. And yeah, like the video. If you don't like it, you can dislike it. You won't see it, but I will. But make sure to leave a comment so I can improve on what you want to see for later. And aside from that, I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one. Thank you